What's up everybody, it's Jordan from The Illustrated. Um, today we're gonna be going through As You Were um, and how my guitar parts came about, um, maybe a little bit on how the song came about, and then we're gonna be doing a live playthrough for you guys. As you So before we get into everything, um, I'll give you a quick rundown of um, what I'm using here today, what I used on the record, um, and then we'll get into the song. So originally when we recorded this song, um, I actually recorded it on my Nashville telly, but unfortunately uh, the input jack on it is broken. Um, so I'm gonna be doing my best to recreate those tones uh, on my Strat today. So the Strat I'm using today um, has got an HSS configuration for the pickups. Uh, Quilt Maple Top, uh, Pale Moon Ebony on the fretboard. Um, really an awesome guitar. I love this guitar. Um, I'm playing through my Wampler Bravado um, amp into um, a Greenback cab. And then uh, for the tones that I'm using today, um, the first tone I'm going to be using, I'm using my JHS um, double barrel. This kind of gives it like a nice breakup. Um, really like this pedal um, and I've got uh, some vibrato going on and then honestly just a lot of reverb. That kind of gives like a nice glassy tone um, that I went for for the beginning of As You Were. Uh, kind of like... Like that kind of open uh, glassy tone. So that's the tone um, that kind of starts off the song. Um, and then I'll go into more of an overdrive um, for the chorus. And I'll kick on my direct drive by Barber Electronics for that. So it kind of gives it more of that uh, crunch tone. Um, so those are the two main tones. I might dive into something else a little bit at one point, but that's basically uh, what we've got going on. All right, so getting into the song. Uh, Zach and I actually comment at the same time on this song, um, and we kind of uh, drop in um, on this A major chord. And throughout the song, I kind of try to avoid just playing um, just a regular A major or um, any sort of just basic shape. So I drop in on this like E over A shape, um, kind of right over that A major. So. Um, and I kind of arpeggiate that um, in a part that sounds like this. So it's kind of like back and forth between that E over A and then maybe like an F sharp sus. Um, kind of just like to imply that minor chord. That's the part kind of getting into the intro. Um, and then that'll bring us to verse one. So verse one, um, I kind of keep really simple, honestly. I went for more of just like this uh, one note, kind of glassy tone, Western, uh, like, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's kind of just this open sounding, really simple part. It sounds like this. <laughs> just play that um, while I'm singing uh, and it really just leaves everything open. Um, already at that point Paul's kind of doing something that's a little more busy and my vocal pattern at that point is a little more busy too. Um, so we opted to just kind of keep the rest of it pretty open. And then for the second part of this verse um, I kind of bring back those other shapes that I started the song with. <laughs> I think I play them on three. Yeah, I play them on three, so one, two. And originally how we recorded that was that it was actually two different parts. Um, so I kept that one note part going uh, all the way through the verse, and then I added the chords later. Um, but what you're seeing now is actually a, sort of a live ad adaptation of um, 
where I play, just so it kind of gives the illusion that I'm covering everything. That's kind of the idea for verse, um, really for all of the verses in the song. Um, I don't really change much in the second verse um, because I kind of like the idea of the second verse, things changing around me uh, and me kind of keeping things the same. All right, so that brings us to chorus one. So uh, chorus one, I just add a little bit of uh, dirt to the sound, honestly. Um, and uh, I kind of strayed away from just playing like power chords because I felt like, I, it just kind of felt like that had been done honestly before. Um, so I kind of reverted to this part that I played where I kind of um, pedal picked and um, sort of uh, arpeggiated the, the chords that I was going for. Um, and that part sounds like this. So that part's kind of, it's actually, a, it's, it's a pretty cool part. Um, and I'll actually take the distortion off of it um, so you can kind of hear what's going on a little bit better. And then I kind of build it into the next part um, which is a little bit more driving because the whole band kind of changes up at that point um, and we drive the second half of the chorus harder. Uh, so that sounds like this. So um, kind of two different parts throughout that chorus. Um, and then additionally, when we got into the studio, it didn't really feel like it was quite full enough um, just doing those parts. Um, so what we ended up doing, uh, we put it through um, a Mesa Boogie amp. And uh, we probably stacked three or four of those guitar parts underneath um, the other guitar part. And this part was just straight uh, power chords. So. And we added that layer, honestly, just to fatten up the guitar part that was already there. Um, so it's kind of a cool thing uh, and a little bit more of a texture thing once everything is added together. Um, but if you listen closely, you can kind of hear my original guitar part mixed in with those, um, those uh, Mesa Boogie tracks. And then at the end of the chorus, uh, we all stop on three um, to make way for Zach's uh, big bass riff or big bass lick or whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, yeah, we stop on three, and then we all come back in on the next measure on three as well. Um, so, one, two. And then from right there, we're straight into uh, verse number two. As I mentioned earlier, verse two isn't really much different for me. Um, I play the same part and things around me change, um, which I think is really cool because it kind of gives the illusion of things going to a completely different spot. Um, verse two in a lot of our songs, y'all will probably notice that uh, we tend to just change things up a little bit. I won't really go much into verse two just because it is the same, um, but that'll bring us to the section that comes right before chorus two, which um, I guess we can call the pre-chorus for these purposes. And I kind of go back to that crunchy tone for that. So uh, that part sounds like this. And then I build right into um, chorus two. Um, not much to really say about that section there. It's a nice build section. Um, and uh, it's a way to kind of, again, break up the same um, monotony of like the same four chords happening over and over again. Um, so more of a songwriting choice there. Um, but I didn't do anything too special on the guitar. Um, chorus two. Um, chorus two really is honestly the same for me. Um, 
I don't change again in that chorus. I do pretty much the exact same part as chorus one. And then right after we get out of chorus two, um, we go directly into the bridge, which for me again, um, if you're noticing a pattern here, uh, I'm gonna go into the same part. So um, bridge in this song is actually identical to uh, the pre-chorus for me. Um, so once more. <laughs> really just it's that same part over and over again um, and I might do some slight embellishments live but on the record it's really really cut and dry um, and then from that bridge we do that four times and then from that bridge uh, we go into uh, I guess what we would call like the breakdown section so in the breakdown it's really uh, it's very isolated it's just me this is a hard one for me to recreate because we actually did two tracks in the studio and accidentally, I kind of did something on a second track that was inverse to what I had already played on the first track. Um, so it kind of creates this cool, like, uh, I don't even know what to call it, like this cool inverse effect. Um, but the part roughly goes like this. <laughs> there we build we build right there I just kind of uh, kick on my distortion about halfway through that build and then just balls to the wall just balls to the wall uh, that part of this the song is really fun and also was a really really fun part to create right there we ended up doing like five or six tracks of feedback just like really pushed it a couple of the tracks had like some whammy bar things in them um, and uh, we just really really wanted to build the energy uh, while Paul's doing his big uh, fill. And then we're in. Um, so it's kind of like the big moment of the song where it's like, get ready, we're gearing up for that last chorus. So chorus three, uh, the big chorus. Um, again, for me, nothing really changes. I kind of do the same part all the way through um, and uh, let things around me change, you know. Jorge, as he described in his video, um, you know, he does his normal part and then the second half, just on the last chorus, he changes into this like crazy, uh, you know, uh, tremolo picking, what is, what is it? Uh? He does this crazy thing um, and it kind of just allows me to just like do the same thing I was doing, but the energy still builds right there at the end. Um, and then it brings me back, uh, and I end the, t uh, the song with the same tone I started it with, um, the same part I started it with, really, um, which is just this. You know, and then we do that little fun quarter tone uh, band at the end. Um, but yeah, really that breaks down all of my parts for um, As You Were. Um, the song was super fun to make. Um, we had a blast in the studio uh, making this. Um, my parents showed up, my brother showed up, and uh, we just made a day out of it. And uh, this one really came together awesome. One more thing I do want to shout out for this song um, was uh, just something cool that happened along the way. Um, when we were in the studio for this one, uh, we work with our uh, good friend, our mentor, our teacher from the Atlanta Institute of Music, um, Scott Keeklack. And uh, he, is a, he is a G. He is like hands down uh, one of the best people we know and we're so excited and so blessed honestly to be working with him. Um, so when we were in the studio, uh, he, what we do is we, we have this big SSL console that we record everything through. Um, and he'll do a rough mix on the console. And uh, we went in one night to work on a few uh, mix things and maybe add a few like minor tracks, or maybe I was doing some vocals. Um, but uh, it was really cool because we got done with the session and we were, fuck you! No way. Dude, I was like in the middle of like a good story. 
and we got into our cars and we were kind of just hanging out and he pops out of the studio and he walks up to the car window. He goes, hey guys, I, uh, I think we're, we're kind of capturing something special here. Um, he goes, what if we just didn't mix this one in the box? What if we mix this on, on the console? You know, just keep it analog. He goes, I feel like we're, we're catching a vibe. And, uh, you know, for, for somebody like us, like that's a really cool moment to say, you know, you know what, we're catching a vibe here. Like, let's not change what we're doing. Let's not do our usual process. Let's just, let's just let it be what it is. Um, and the scary part of that is uh, once that mix is off the board, it's gone forever. Um, so uh, once it was bounced from the board, that was the mix. I think that one kind of gives this song a little bit of a special character to it. And uh, it's just kind of a cool memory and a cool story. So um, with that being said, y'all, um, those are my guitar parts for As You Were. Um, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed listening through and seeing how this came together. And uh, we'll be doing a playthrough for you in just a moment. Thank you.